Hi everyone, it's Rio Klaus and in today's video, we'll look at Microsoft Purview, in particular on-demand classification, which is currently in public preview. First things first, you want to access the Purview console via purview.microsoft.com, which will take you to the Microsoft Purview Admin Center, formerly known as the Compliance Center. On the left-hand side where we see solutions, down the left-hand service blade, we want to navigate to information protection. This will take you to the information protection work blade where we can push out sensitivity labels and automatically apply those labels to particular items within our organization. Now on the left-hand side where we've got classification, there's now a new option called on-demand classification. Now, what is on-demand classification? Well, this capability is here to not only identify, but also classify historical data living within your data estate, whether or not that be within SharePoint Online or even OneDrive for Business. So let's have a look at some examples. Well, maybe you've had previously unlabeled content within your business boundaries. You need a mechanism, you need a way to be able to label that retrospective content. Well, this is where on-demand classification comes into play. Or even you have updated your automatic labeling or rules over the past seven to 30 days, and you need to retrospectively push out those labels based on those new set of rules. This will also suffice for those types of um, scenarios. Now, how we get started is we create a new scan, and this will ask us to create a name. We'll give the scan name a new scan. Now we can give a description, it's not mandatory. Now when we press next, it will validate that the name's unique as that is a prerequisite. Now once that's loaded, it will ask us to define the data sources. What type of data are we trying to retrospectively label? Now this may take a couple of seconds and here we go. Now, we're going to choose where the system needs to look, where the system needs to find items based on particular sensitive information types and trainable classifiers. And we've only got two scopes of interest here, one being SharePoint and two being OneDrive. And of course, we've got the edit button on the right hand side where we can exclude specific sites via the site URL and even the OneDrive URL. Now, if we select both for the time being and select next, it will then ask us to review our classifiers. Now, by default, the scope is all sensitive information types and all trainable classifiers. As this is step one in regards to that retrospect retrospective classification, step two will then be defining actually what data we want to label. Now, here we can view the scope of the classifiers, and these are all the predefined built-in classif classifiers which are already built on our behalf by Microsoft. And there's about 327 classifiers to date. Now that would also include any custom classifiers you've created in the past. And second to that, we've got the trainable classifiers, which, which once more are also the predefined built-in ones and custom ones, if any. Now at the bottom, we need to scope the time frame of data we would like to retrospectively label. Um, here, I may do it maybe um, a month, month back, right? So if we're starting on 28th of April, the end date's 28th of April, then I may do uh, 28th of March, we kick this off. Now we can then press next and we can review and submit. Now I've already completed this um, previously as it takes 24 hours to, for the scan to run. Scan items within your organization and then provide you a report. So if I come out of here, you can see I've got an existing scan, uh, which has provided me an estimation, um, not just an es estimation on how many items I could potentially uh, scan, uh, sorry, label, but also the estimated cost associated, as there is a cost element uh, to on-demand classification, which we'll get into in a second. Now, it's been completed. It was created by myself and the data sources are both SharePoint and OneDrive. Now, if we click onto the test scan, you can see the estimation is completed. I can see it's been scoped to all the necessary classifiers. And once again, the data sources are SharePoint and OneDrive. Now, if I view the estimation, this will give me a breakdown on how many items have been found. 
So it's found 688 items within that time frame I've specified, which have not yet been labeled. All right. At the bottom here, we've got the location, um, which is both those scopes we looked at earlier, one being OneDrive and two being SharePoint. So for OneDrive, it's found 552 items across um, 12 user identities in my organization. And for SharePoint, it's found 136 items once again, um, across all the different sites within my organization. So like I said, there is a cost element to this, right? Indicatively, it's around 15 to 16 pound per, um, uh, 15 to 16 pound for every 10,000 items scanned. So for us in this organization, it scanned 688 and a subset of that cost is estimated that it's gonna be around one, 138 um, dollars, right? Of course, whatever that equates to GBP. And then it breaks it down per scope also. Now, there is a cost calculator for this, which is found on azure.microsoft.com forward slash pricing, forward slash details, forward slash purview. And at the bottom, you've got the ability to break down that on-demand classification cost. So it's not a SKU in essence. There is a prerequisite of having Microsoft 365 E5 or the E5 information protection and governance uh, SKU. Uh, but you also need to uplift your Microsoft Purview account from free tier to enterprise tier, right? And like I said, it is around the £15 mark um, for every 10,000 assets in your organization. Now, how we go about setting up the uh, billing? Well, you initially need to create a uh, resource group, which is found in Microsoft Azure, and I've called my resource group Microsoft Purview, right? Um, and then, of course, you need to associate the resource or the, um, the subscription to Microsoft Purview itself. And that's done through uh, the settings pane on the left hand side. And where we see accounts, uh, there will be an option to connect or upgrade your account from free tier to enterprise. Once you've done that, this pane will change um, in regards to showing you the resource, right? Uh, we're billing to the resource group we're billing to whether or not the uh, subscription is active and also the underlying subscription and where your data is kept at rest. Now, if we go back to solutions and go back to information protection, we of course created that scan and it's determined the um, amount of items found in both SharePoint and OneDrive, but now we can start the classification if we're ready to, right? Once again, this can take some time, um, a few hours to even 24 hours for this to classify all that data you've refined, right? Um, other than that, we've also got collection policies on the left-hand side. And once again, this is in public preview. And this is here to isolate and segment different data, different activities across your different data sources within your estate, i.e. If I was to go into Explorer and go to Activity Explorer, I would see data and telemetry across different activities, across different data sources, across different users and groups. With collection policies, we can isolate that information and segment it into what we like to call collection policies, which means moving forward, when we go into Activity Explorer, we're able to filter based on the collection policies we've created rather than the all up data as a whole. Because it may be as an organization, you're only really interested in a particular sensitive information type such as a credit card number or a passport number. You don't really care whether or not someone's uh, referenced the word um, uh, co-pilot across your organization but you care if people are referencing credit card numbers and then sharing those credit card numbers onto a USB stick or into a generative AI website. Well, that's where collection policies come into play. And how we go about creating the collection policy is press create policy. And we'll call this policy, um, sorry, if I take the capital letters, policy uh, V1, we press next. We define the data sources, all right? Or sorry, the conditions. And a condition could be, content contains classifier and we can edit this to include all classifiers or even exclude or um, define specific classifiers and it may be my reference from previous videos which may be the reference of pizza right so if i press done on here 
we're adding conditions to define what data to detect, right? Because pizza as a reference is important to me as a business, right? I've then got other conditions I could satisfy as part of that pizza being referenced, which could be the extension is equal to plus sensitive information type is referenced or document size equals or is greater than or smaller than. Now, if I select next, I then need to detect the activity I'm trying to detect. So it may be actually, I'm looking for the word pizza, right? The reference of pizza as a keyword match. Um, but I'm also looking for the activity type of when pizza is referenced and when pizza is printed. I then need to define the data source. So these are typical endpoint, um, let's say DLP actions. So they do require an E5 license. Therefore, the scope will always be device. However, you have got the ability to also look at copilot interactions, copilot experiences. Um, let's say, you know, we, like I said earlier, we are copying the word pizza into a, maybe a generic AI or third party website such as ChatGPT. Then of course we can scope it to copilot experiences as well. But for this principle, we're going to select devices and select next. And then we've got the option to consolidate those selected classifiers and detect. All right. Now, to capture content on the data to detect, you must scope the content contains conditions to all. All right. Um, and on where to apply step, only select your AI data sources and cloud apps. And then, of course, you can put this in uh, one of two modes, which is turn on or keep off, and then you review and create. And that takes some time for that data then to be, um, let's say, uh, combed over and indexed and then isolated appropriately, which means in the area of insider risk, activity explorer, uh, and any other solution, DSP and AI, for example, you're able to refine re search results based on collection policies and not all up data sets, which is really useful. Now, let's say you've got insider risk management and that's looking at a particular data set. You then um, uh, post create a collection policy. Collection policies will always supersede. So always be very careful on when creating collection policies um, after you've already created policies within the, retrospect within the respective solutions. All right. This is relatively new, uh, both on-demand classification and collection policies uh, are very new, have only been pushed out. And if they're not already in your organization or not already in your Microsoft Purview portal, then there are there is a release wave um, and you're probably on the later release wave. Um, but this is what both of these solution or capabilities are here for. All right, any questions, please let me know. But once again, this is all documented on the uh, Microsoft Learn uh, content online. Thank you very much.